All right, so today we're going to try out a few different calibers uh, on my old brakes off of my truck. As you can see, I've got three of my rotors and three of my calipers out there. Uh, it's off a one-ton uh, truck, um, one-ton GMC. And we're going to try the 22, and then we're going to go to like a 380, a 9, 45, or a 357, a 44 mag, 223. 762 by 39, 762 by 51, 308, and then eventually a 7 mil rem mag. And I've got all that stuff sitting here. So let's get started. All right, so before we shoot anything, I kind of wanted to show you how thick these rotors are. You can see they're like a quarter inch on either side of the cooling fins. And then they're all steel or iron. And then you've got the uh, calipers themselves, which are aluminum or magnesium, I'm not sure. They're definitely not steel though. They're still pretty heavy duty. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and see what kind of damage we can do. I suspect 22, 380, 9 mil is not gonna do anything. Above that, we don't know. We're gonna find out. So what we're gonna start out here is the uh, Ruger 1022 breakdown. I'm gonna go ahead and put this together and we're gonna go ahead and fire a few rounds at those rotors, see how it goes. All right, so we just fired 10 rounds with the Ruger 1022 at uh, the rotors here and the caliper. Let's go see how it did. All right, first off, you can see I just hit this, uh, the um, caliper here a couple times with the 22, and all it did was bounce right off and leave a little bit of lead. As far as the rotors, I don't see any hits. So I'm going to go ahead and take a few more shots, see if I can hit those, and then we'll move on to the 380. All right, here we go. We're going to try the 1022 again. All right, there's 10 more rounds with the 1022. I know I got a few hits because I could see it. Let's go take a look. All right, so we hit this, uh, hit the rotors here a few times with the 1022, and you can see there was no penetration, just explosions. So you can see right here, literally wiped that off. I mean, there's probably grab it with my thumbnail, but pretty much didn't do anything. Um, so let's move on to the 380. All right, the next caliber here is going to be the Walther PPKS in a 380, just as 9 millimeter short. So we're going to take a few shots with that, see how it goes. All right, here we go with the Walther PPKS in a 380. Okay, I believe that was seven or eight shots. Let's go take a look, see if we got a hit. Looks like we're gonna have to load some more rounds because I did not hit these uh, rotors at all with the 380. Although I'm shooting from probably uh, 40 to 50 yards away, which isn't normal for a 380. So we go ahead and load up another mag and we'll see if we can hit. All right, here we go. We're gonna take about eight more shots with the 380. Cock the lever, here we go, with the hammer. Got a jam. Go look. All right, we definitely got some hits because I know that all these weren't the 22 for sure. I think there was only one over here. So you can see 
a hit there, and a hit there. See what it did. Yeah, I mean it bruised it a little bit, but it didn't it didn't do much of anything. Oh yeah, here's a few more. One, two, three, four, five. It it didn't even impact a dent into the rotors. It just left lead on top. So I think we're gonna have to go to the nine now. See how that goes. All right, so the next caliber up is gonna be the nine mil. We're using a nine by 19 Luger in this model 19 X Glock, which uh, is one of the um, one of the guns that was competing for the new arms contract to replace the old um, uh, Berettas that the military was using. So I got the 19 X. We're gonna have three mags I'm using a Cellier and Belat SMB. 9mm FMJ uh, rounds. Nothing special. Let's go get it loaded up and take some shots. Alright, got the 9mm load up. The Glock 19X here. We're going to go ahead and take some shots. See if we can hit the uh, targets out of here. Alright, that was 17 rounds. Let's take a look. Alright, so this is with the 9x19. You can see at least one right there. That was definitely not there before. You can see the golden sh uh, jacket that's imprinted on the outside of the mag, or the uh, rotor. And then here, I think I hit in the hole. It's hard to tell. But it feels like it was shooting a little bit low. Um, either way, if that's at least one round, you can tell it didn't do anything. All it did was leave the jacket on top and explode the round. Looks like we're going up to the, I don't know, let's see, the 45? And we'll see how that does. Alright, next up above my 9mm here is going to be, let's say, the 45 ACP, which is a Glock 21C. I'm shooting just this SMB uh, FMJ um, round, 230 grain. This is normally what I carry in there. It is a... Winchester hollow point. Um, so let's go ahead and get these loaded up, take some shots. Alright, so now we got the 21C Glock loaded up with some 45. Uh, let's go ahead and take some shots. Let's take a few more before we walk down there. Alright, here's a few more. Let's go take a look. Alright, I could hear the hits, so I know I was hitting. Let's see. All right, yeah, you can see right here, boom. Look at those FMJ jackets right there. Again, no penetration at all. Just the jacket is built up on the skin of the rotor, and it just looks like it exploded all of the lead. So, again, no penetration. This is thick stuff. I don't think we're going to get anything until we move up to the rifles. All right, guys. On to the next. I think that's going to be 357 mag and then we'll go to a 44 mag. Alright, our next round of choice here is going to be my Smith & Wesson 357 Magnum. Uh, let's see what kind of round is in here. So we're using a... Let's see what this is. 350 SMB, 357 mag. So same manufacturer as the other rounds we've been shooting. And it's got 
an FMJ, or a, not a full metal jacket, it's got a partial metal jacket with a lead penetrator there. So let's go ahead and try and see if we can hit it with this. Here we go with the 357 Magnum. That's it. I don't think I brought any more rounds for this, so if I didn't hit it, I didn't hit it. Let's go take a look. All right, let's see if we can identify anywhere I might have hit this thing. I really am not, not seeing anything different from last time. That was the nine, it's the 45. That's probably nine. Oh well. Don't don't have any more rounds for that, so we'll go to the 44 mag next. All right, up next guy here is the Model 29 Dirty Harry uh 44 mag. It's a Model 29-3, 6 inch blued barrel. We're shooting a 44 mag round, not the special. And let's see what that what that looks like here. So that is a partial metal jacket. Was this an SM? Oh, this is a Remington 44 mag. Hollow point, partial metal jacket. Not sure what it'll do or if I can even hit it from this far, but let's go ahead and give it our best shot. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, Smith & Wesson Model 29, 44 mag. Hollow point, partial metal jacket. Oh, that's a big, big kick right there. That's it guys. I only had six rounds on me. Let's go take a look. Alright guys, definitely hit it with the 44 mag. Knocked both targets over. Look at that. This is the thinnest part of the metal it still didn't go through. Although it's not an FMJ, it was just a hollow point with a partial metal jacket. It's... That's... Seriously though, that's, that's pretty freaking... Uh, look at that where it hit here on the actual rotor itself. Cracked it. Looks like it cracked it. Put a nice size uh, chunk in that. Same thing on this one. So, for being 40 or 50 yards away, that six inch barrel really helped with accuracy. I think I hit it there, one, two, three, four. So I think four out of six shots hit. We'll stand these back up and move up to the, uh, I believe up to the rifle rounds now. All right, now we're stepping up to the rifle rounds, which I predict will be penetrating. And to give you a clue, five, five, six, that's right everybody's favorite the evil black AR-15 so this here is a DPMS lower not sure I don't remember what the upper is uh, it's got an ACOG 4 power on it um, an Enforce light on it some Magpul backup sights Harris bipod a Magpul sling Magpul buttstock and uh, whatever this grip a Hogue grip I think so let's go ahead and see how this does alright here's the AR-15 with the 5.56 rounds in it I'm gonna go ahead and set it up where my camera is so I'll find a new place for the camera but let's go ahead and see if we get any penetration with this thing alright guys so I fired 30 rounds of the 5.56 out of my AR-15 I fired a bunch at this uh, caliper here and you can see it didn't penetrate all the way through but it did take some chunks out one two three four or five rounds on it fired a few here you can see I penetrated into the cylinder this is the piston. You see the piston actually popped out. It may have cracked it, but yeah, it put two holes clean through the cylinder there. And you can see the brake fluid that leaked out. So <clears throat> definitely, definitely, and you can see the jacket in there too. One, two, three, four, five, and there's about five, so that's like ten rounds on those. I think I took a few shots over here. I don't remember. Yeah, you can see where I hit it right here. 
took a chunk out, punched a hole, punched a hole, and then I took a bunch of shots onto these. You can see, boom, it, it went right through the uh, that deal right there. Every hole where you see it penetrated, here, 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 that's all from the 5.56. Five, Same thing, here, 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 here. Yeah, so that went through this. It didn't go, I thought I took a few shots. That was from the 44 mag. I don't see where it went through the actual rotor itself. But yeah, we're getting into it. Getting into it finally. So we'll go ahead and maybe take a few more shots with the 5.56 and then move up to the 7.62 by 39, which is the AK. I said we were going to try some more 223, but instead of shooting out of an AR like everybody's got, I'm going to shoot it out of my Styrog A3. This is the non NATO version. So there's a NATO version that takes, um, oh, this is, I guess this is the NATO version. So it takes P mags. You can use your AR mags in it, except it doesn't have a slide release button. Um, it's got the three power Styr scope on it. Um, what else? It's got backup iron sights on top. Um, so the Steyr, the, the original Steyr version has got its own proprietary magazines and I didn't want to have to deal with proprietary. So I got this kind because I can use my AR mags and that's nice. So as you can see there, it is an actual Steyr. It's not some knockoff. Um, let's see, foregrip folds down. It's a pretty cool gun. It's got this integrated three power scope here, which is kind of just a circle for a reticle. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you the mag. I brought one mag for it. So this is just a regular P mag. You can buy these from Magpul. And we've got the normal everyday 5.56 five, SMB rounds in here. And they pop in just like this. And there you go. So let's go ahead and take some shots and see how it goes. All right, we're going to take some shots here with the Styrog A3 in 5.56 five, SMB FMJ rounds. There we go. Let's see what we hit. All right, so we shot that 556 five, uh, Styrog A3. Shot at this one here a few more times. You can see I hit down low on it. Uh, same results. It's the same length barrel, so I mean it really shouldn't have any more velocity than the AR uh, 16 and a half, I think 16. So yeah, I was shooting at this one, and then I was shooting at these. Let's see if we hit it. Yeah, I mean, I have to go back and review the film. There's so many holes now. This one fell over, so I know I hit this one. We can see that in the center ring there, I've got a few. I'm just not sure if I'm hitting on the actual steel, though. The big steel. Anyway, let's go ahead and move up to that 762 by 39 AK. All right, we're stepping up in calibers again here. We're going to the, uh, what is this thing? Century Arms, the Century. Yep, Century Arms C39B2 AK with the folding stock, all made by Magpul. 762 by 39 traditional AK round. I've already cleared the weapon, so don't leave any comments about how I'm handling them. But things pretty cool. It's pretty heavy. It's got a milled receiver. Let's go ahead and get it loaded up. All right, here we go. AK.
was fun. Let's go take a look. All right, we're back at the scene of the crime here. You can see this one fell over, so I definitely hit it. Oh yeah, there we go. That's a 762 hit right there, look at that. Now we finally got some penetration. Um, I'm not seeing anywhere else where we really hit it, but look at that, dude. I mean, it's close to a quarter inch into that penetrated, which is some wolf ammo, FMJs. Obviously nothing out the back of the main steel there. If that, it looks like it hit right on a cooling fin. If it didn't, if it hit between the cooling fins, I bet you it would have gone all the way through. Let's take a look at this other one here. Yep, similar results. There's an indent where it almost went through, hit a cooling fin, and boom, penetration finally. There you go. So you can see it went in all the way through the front and exploded right in the middle there. So that's pretty cool. Finally getting some penetration. It took an AK round. Now we're gonna step up to the second to last round which would be the 308 and then after that would be the 7 mil rem mag and that's all the calibers I have right now uh, with me today. Alright, second to last rifle today is gonna be the Springfield Armory M1A which you guys probably know well if you know anything about World War II. It used to be the Mini, Mini 14 or M1 Garand. This is a SOCOM 16. And it shoots a 762 by 51 308 round, which is a very powerful round. It's got good ballistics. The problem is I'm on iron sights here. Um, I do want to get a scope for this, but with how far forward the Picatinny rail is, you have to have something with a huge eye relief. So probably just end up getting a red dot. Um, let's see. We'll go ahead and get this thing loaded up and shot. By the way, just so you can see what that looks like, here is a 308 762 by 51. It's gonna go into the M1A there. All right, let's go ahead and shoot it. Man, that thing hits hard. That's a fun round to shoot, man. Let's go take a look. All right, guys, back here after the 308. Took some shots at this caliper here. Looks like I might have hit it right there. I'm not sure if that's old or new. I'll have to look back at the film. Uh, all right, yeah, here we go. Here's some penetration. Look at that. All the way through. Let's see if it went in and out. Nothing in and out, as you can see. Well. I did hit it in the side a couple of times, shot it when it was down. And then over here, that's <clears throat> the 762 by 39. I uh, unless no, that's gotta be the 762 by 39. And then I put one through the side with the 308. A couple through the side with the 308 here. But that's 762, that's 308. Right in, right in. Uh, pretty impressive round. Let's see what it did to the back. So now we're going to step up to the 7mm Rem Mag, which is out of a Ruger M77 hunting rifle with a Nikon scope on it. And that'll be the last round uh, for penetration. But pretty happy so far. Just fun to shoot stuff like this because it was going to go in the garbage anyway. Alright guys, the last round today for penetration is going to be coming out of this Ruger M77 bolt action hunting rifle. This is a classic rifle, it's shooting a pretty, I don't know, not hard to find or particularly common. It's just not common, it's a 7mm rem mag. Everybody's shooting 308 now, 300 blackout, 
um, 30-06, some people are shooting 338 Lapua, um, but for a hunting rifle, I mean, this packs a punch, man. If you've ever, if you never shot a 7 mil rim mag, look at these freaking cartridges. Look at these. And then look here, here's a 7.62, I believe, or is this a 308? Let's see what this is. This is a 308. So look at the 308 cartridge, which is a big cartridge. Look at it next to the 7 mil. I mean, it's not even close. That is a lot of powder. It's not a huge projectile. It's a 7 mil projectile, which I don't know what caliber that is, but 28 caliber. I'm not sure. I have to look it up. But look at just look at that huge difference. I'm gonna go ahead this get loaded up, and we'll take some shots. All right, guys. Here is the 7 mil rem mag out of this uh, Ruger M77. See how we do. It only holds four rounds, by the way. Holy crap. Hit one of them. Yep, hit them both. Let's take a shot at the caliper. I don't know if I hit it or not. Wow, that smoked that freaking thing. Let's go take a look. Alright guys, back at the scene. I shot this one here with the 7mm, I believe, one time. Took four shots, one on each caliper, one on each rotor. Don't Maybe it hit here and blew that whole thing out, I'm not sure. But this one, it hit, and you could see the smoke. This one definitely penetrated. Not sure where it penetrated. Those two holes were already there from the 556. <clears throat> Not sure. I'll have to shoot it a few more times to see. You can see the piston blown out there. That was when I shot with the 556 though. I have to go ahead and see if I can punch that from the side. Alright, and let's take a look at these. Two rounds with these. Oh yeah. Look at that. That's seven mil right there, just clean in and out probably. Well, it didn't go through the back side of the rotor, but look, it went through the front and blew it out. That is a powerful round. And then this other one here I also hit. Look at that dude. Boom. Big old hole right through the cooling fin and then exploded on the back side there you can see the casing in the jacket how it cracked that thing you can see there's a crack in it like it wants to go all the way through so load up a few more of those and try it again see where I get but uh, overall pretty happy pretty fun try and hit this thing a couple more times see what it does Throw this rock out of here. All right, guys. All right, here's a few more rounds of seven mil rem mag here. Four more rounds here. Last one. All right, guys, that's all the damage we could do today. Sun is going down. I'm gonna get all this stuff picked up, and uh, that was a lot of fun. Thanks for watching, guys.